Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with Iman, with faith. This is one of the greatest gifts that Allah ta'ala could bestow upon a human being, especially at this particular historical juncture, because faith provides us the foundation for having a clear purpose and meaning to life, which those who lack faith do not have. Faith provides us with a foundation for seeing ourselves as being more than merely the and, and a, a continuation of ordinary physical creation. So we are no different essentially in that we're a compilation of atoms and molecules than this podium or the air that we breathe or the tree outside or the rock that we might sit on. We're no different essentially. Faith tells us that we are different. Faith tells us that we have a quality that allows us to recognize that there is a power greater than ourselves, that allows us to connect to that power at a deeper level, at a deeper trans or sub-physical level. These are the gifts of faith. Faith also allows us to not be tortured by the differentiation or rather the hierarchy that we see in the world, especially in human institutions. There are moves today to render everything, allegedly everything equal. Allegedly, and I say allegedly because if we look at something like the contemporary attack on what's sometimes referred to as patriarchy. Some person or people might say, well, it's only an effort to restore a balance or equality between patriarchy and matriarchy. But in reality, it's not that. It's an effort to destroy both. So that we end up in, with some sort of an androgynous middle that's neither fully male or fully female a sort of, of, of gender hypocrisy. If the hypocrites are described, la ilaha ula'i wa la ilaha ula, neither here nor there. And so that's what we're being pushed towards as a society. Faith allows us to understand that in the context of an assault of shaitan, of Satan, against us. No faith, there's not only no God, there's also no Satan. And if there's no Satan, there's no evil force pushing us in directions that would destroy humanity. Why is it so difficult for people to get married today? I would argue one reason is because the lines between clear masculinity and clear femininity are becoming so blurred that people can't see themselves as being fully male and therefore fully attracted and committed to a female and vice versa. And who benefits from that? Shaitan benefits because what is Satan's, what is Satan's greatest joy and greatest delight and his most, his firmest conviction? To destroy the family. We read in Surah Baqarah that these shayateen فَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُمَا they learn from these two at Babel Harut and Marut that which sows distinction between a man and his woman. Satan sends out his dupes. And when they return, he asks them, What have you done? One of them says, I agitated the man and the woman until they fought each other. And he said, You didn't do anything because when you left, they reconciled. And he asks another, What have you done? And he said, I caused them to fight until they separated. They divorced each other. He said, this one has done something. And he took his crown and placed it on his head. There are demonic forces at work in our world. And one of the consequences of atheism is the failure to even recognize the existence of these forces, let alone recognize the damage that they're doing to our society, to say nothing of fighting and pushing back against them. 
Because with faith, they don't, without faith, rather, they don't even exist. And so we see the, the consequences of evil all around us. And we see growing evil, proliferating evil. I would argue it's no coincidence that the, the six, five, six or seven of the deadliest mass shootings in American history have occurred during the last 10 years. In other words, and I'm not saying correlation indicates direct causation, but I, I say it's something we should begin to think about, that these mass killings have grown up with atheism. And they don't want to talk about it, the, the shooter in Texas who goes into a church and just murders indiscriminately is an atheist. And I would argue, some person might point the finger, what about these Muslim mass murderers? I would argue that a lot of them lack real faith. Not the faith that you look at a, a catechism and say, I affirm this, I affirm that, I affirm that. So I affirm Tawheed, Ulu, Hir, Ulu, Bia, and that, what's the fact, what, 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 and I check all the boxes. But faith that's described by saying sometimes attributed to our prophet, they said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said, Deen bi tamanni wa lakin ma waqara fil qalbi wa saddaqo al amal. That faith, Deen here meaning faith, isn't a, a fantasy, rather it's what takes root in the heart and then is testified to by the action. And that's why we call actualized faith, aqidah, that which is bound up with the heart. Not that which is intellectualized and then checked off as some sort of empty uh, checklist that you, if you paid a drunk in an alley enough money to check out, you do it. Now I'll give you a bottle of wine, just check all the boxes and say you believe. I believe, you give me two bottles of wine, I'll really start believing. But faith that is entered into the heart of the human being and then transforms that human being from the inside out that transforms that human being from the inside out. That's the faith that we need. And that's the faith that our world is increasingly lacking in many quarters. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq. May Allah Ta'ala give us success. Without faith, we can't see ourselves as being a reflection of a loving, merciful power in this universe. Allah Ta'ala is Ar-Rahim, Ar-Rahman, ar All of these meanings associated with mercy. Allah Ta'ala is al wadud And when we've internalized the meanings of those names, إِنَّ مِنْ لَهِ تِسْعَةً وَتِسْعِينَ إِسْمًا مِيَةً إِلَى وَاحِدًا مَنْ أَحْصَاهَا دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ Allah has 99 names, 100 less one. Whoever has, has internalized the meanings of those names and then reflects the meanings of those names through their being. Without faith, we can't realize as we started the special nature of our being. There's an ontological truth associated with our existence. Our existence started with being. His command when he desires something is but he says be. And here's the ontological moment. Be and it is. We exist because Allah entered, uh, issued a command governing each and every one of our existence. Be, and we are. Which is not something that is necessary or inevitable or incumbent. But is based on a divine choice informed by divine wisdom, brought in and actualized by divine power. And yet the world wants to separate us from the divine. So that we don't see our actions as reflecting the magnanimity and reflecting the, great, the greatness and re reflecting the specialness of the divine. As Muslims, we have to become conscious of who we are. Some of you saw the Lion King. 
But the key moment, right? The key moment is when Mufasa says to Simba, what? Simba, remember who you are. Right? And then Simba, he remembers what? He remembers he's the king. And the kingdom is being destroyed. And he has a responsibility to go back and save the kingdom. Well, brothers and sisters, you are the king of this creation. You are the Khilafa. You are the vice jerry. And the kingdom's being destroyed. And you have the responsibility to go out there and save the kingdom. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. You're not just a podium. You're not just a tree. You're not a rock. You're not an empty compilation of atoms and molecules or physical stuff. You're a physical stuff that's been endued with the divine command. You're a physical stuff that has the capability of reflecting the names and attributes of Almighty God. You're a physical stuff that has a root. You're a physical stuff that has a soul that's capable of being refined. As we equalize and level everything in this world with these twisted and corrupted ideologies that are being foisted upon humanity. The leveling takes place at the lowest denominator, the least common denominator. So there's a race to the bottom. We want to abandon the lofty tradition of great philosophers and great theologians and great leaders, moral and ethical leaders, and become united at the level of the bestial. Nafsul bahabahimiyah shahwaniyah. Surrender to your desires. Forget about any illumination. As we talk about illumination, some Muslims have been so, or enlightenment, better word, enlightenment, and being an enlightened human being. Some Muslims have become so twisted, they'll say that's bid'ah, that's Sufism, that's Sufi bid'ah. Well, how, why did our Prophet send to teach us a prayer that's recorded in Bukhari and Muslim, Abu Dawud, Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah, virtually every compilation of hadith and some version of another. Allahumma ja'am fi qalbi nura, wa fi basari nura, wa fi sab'i nura, wa bayna aidi, bayna yadayya nura, wa min khalfi nura, wa an yameeni nura, wa an yasari nura, wa min fawqi nura, wa min tahti nura. Oh Allah, place light in my heart, and light in my vision, and light in my hearing, and light before me, and light behind me, and light to my right, and light to my left, and light above me, and light beneath me, and some words, and light in my skin, and light in my muscles, and light in my nerves. If we're not intended to be an enlightened creature who can light, illuminate the darkness, of evil that's descending upon our world. The darkness of misguidance, error, and strain that's descending upon our world. Why were we taught that prayer? We're being sold as a collective humanity a, 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 a bag of goods. We're being sold cow manure as organic chocolate brownies. <laughs> May Allah give us tawfiq. Akulu kawli hadha wa astaghfirullah. Adi wa lakum. Wa lisa'ir al-mu'minin ya qawm astaghfirullah.